Okay, so we're back in the room after a bit of filtering. No real scare stories there. Got some nice people got out of the way, which is lovely. Gratefully acknowledged and thanked. And uh, if you see this video, you know who you are, and uh, thank you. Right, so back. So what am I doing? Right, today I am the end game, hopefully, as I'll deliver that Triumph uh, photo, the print that I did of uh, Joe's Triumph, if he's there. If not, it doesn't matter. Um, but first, I'm going to, so I'm going to Box Hill via uh, New Malden because I'm going to JNS Accessories. So I found out I've got a store down that way. Um, in the wrong lane, that was a uh, left turn to the motorway only, mate. Anywho, uh, oh, now where are you going? Um, Yeah, so I'm off to um, New Malden. Definitely feel the weight on the back of here. It's not a lot of weight. I haven't got a lot of gear. I'll tell you about the gear in a minute. Or I might wait for the gear. Um, yeah, so where are we going? Yeah, normal, New Malden and then to um, Box Hill. Uh, the Riker's Calf. Uh, yeah, so as you know, I failed my, my Mod 2 on December 21st. And um, after recovering, <laughs> it's my own fault, absolute prat, but there we are. Um, Yeah, so after doing that, I thought to myself, well, <clears throat> oh, I, yeah, so l legally it's 10 days, but I can't get a test now till um, February the 9th is the earliest. But um, if, if, they, if the school get an earlier um, availability, then I'll jump in on that. Um, no training. I, I know what I'm doing. I was just an idiot at the time, and it was just like, oh. Anywho. So I didn't want to waste any time with my uh, photo moto project. So what I'm doing, what I plan to do, is use a lovely little CB125, and there's a reason, to do the 100 mile out, 100 mile back part. Um, it's more for me, it's getting used to the gear, changing the gear around, um, you know, what works, what doesn't work, what I need, what I don't need uh, for the photography and me and the bike and kind of that st kind of stuff. Um, so yeah. Um, so I thought, well, I've got a bike. Um, let's, do the, let's do those. So I'm planning on doing quite a few uh, southeast England coastal runs out. Uh, you've got the obvious Brighton, Hastings, Dover, all those but what I'm trying to do what I'm trying to do is um, pick out a few like seaside areas that you might not have heard of before you know um, and see what they're like we all know what Brighton's like and Hastings and all that but um, I mean the history of that but let's go find a little smaller towns and share that their story and images, of course. Um, yeah, so uh, they're all eager, aren't they? Yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing. And the reason why I've got no problem doing it on the one C five is I can't go on motorways now at the moment. I'm still a learner. Not can any learner, to be honest. Uh, I just didn't hear what Doris told me to do there, so just to go straight, straight on. 
go straight on and just down through Felton or something, but I think she might have time to go right, but we'll see. Too late with the weight and that. But as I said, I am restricted to A roads and B roads, but no motorways. Which is my plan anyway on the on the 500. You know, I plan to um, do all the big journeys on just A roads and B roads, but no motorways. Uh, so yeah, that's my plan. Whoa. So instead of um, waiting for, and get the big bike and then doing a load of stuff, a lot of these little journeys on the big bike, um, I thought well I'll do the little journeys on the little bike and learn a bit of the craft that I want to learn and see if I can do it, you know. Well I know I can ride 100 miles there, 100 miles back, that's easy but... <laughs> Actually talking of underwear, yeah. Um, that's the reason why I'm going to uh, JNS Accessories. I want to get um, uh, a pair of um, thermal long johns, I suppose you want to call them thermal long johns, yeah. Um, so I can wear them underneath the jeans um, on the cold mornings, which we've been blessed not to have uh, so bad, although some people have seen I think eight degrees is too cold in the morning. Um, to me, that's bikini weather. Uh, minus one, well, zero, no, no, let's be serious. Below five degrees to me, yeah, let's put, put another layer on. Um, maybe that's because I'm working outside a lot. I don't know, maybe I'm not so worried about getting cold. Um, so far, so good. Yeah, I've heard uh, Doris has switched off, so I might actually uh, take a short break, do one of my pullover when it's safe to do so. Middle of the lane. It's a red route anyway, so I can't stop. Uh, let's get off the arse of these people. Just got a camera. Um, camera buzzing me here. Tell me that the speeding camera's there. So maybe she is alive. Just doesn't need to tell me anything. Okay. In my bag, I've got um, the brown bag, which I'll show you. I've got a, a jumper and my, um, what do you call it, hoodie thingy. Um, I'm not wearing that at the moment, which I might put on actually. Um, Cause I've got a drop going down the back of my neck. And the hoodie helps with that. Um, but that's just to simulate me taking clothes away. And I've got, a, uh, I've got two, I've got two uh, tripods with me today. Got a small one, well, both not massive, but a smaller one for the phone to do B roll. And the larger one is sitting on the bag, which is underneath the brown bag, which I'll show you. Don't worry, it's, it's, it'll make sense later. Um, uh, for the cameras, and on that note, the cameras as we're on the back gear and stuff. In my bag I have a Canon R6 with 35mm f2 lens, a Canon EOS 1V with 35mm f2 lens. So we've got a simile there, so one's film, one's digital. 
those two will act as my spot meter. Yeah, so they'll act as my spot meter for my uh, Hasselblad 500cm. With 80mm lens, which is equivalency to 35mm, is about 44mm. Uh, so I don't have the time, inclination, money to buy a Hasselblad lens that matches 35mm just for this jolly. Mm. Yeah, I've got to pull into here because Doris isn't working. So, oh, there she is. There she is. So, yeah. So she was just being quiet. <laughs> Probably heard me the other day when I told her to shut up. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, at least we're never working. So, don't have to stop. So, around we go. So, you do a Yui. Just like that. It's charming row houses, isn't it? Very nice. Cool. And we're going left. Careful, because this is a pedestrian street, effectively. There we go. Got lots of people and no, a car. And clear. Wait for Mr. White car, so in case I wobble a bit. There we go. So there's a 312. Uh, there's a uh, free tip for you. If Doris, which I call, which I name uh, Doris, my Google Maps voice, 312, straight across. Yeah. Um, if she goes silent on you, she's got the ump or whatever, and doing her nails, just veer off. And then I'll tell you whether it's working or not. Free tip. <laughs> and a bit of new knowledge for myself. There it is. Yeah, so uh, J and S are very helpful. Uh, got me some expensive, but hopefully worthwhile base layer thermal thingies. Um, for those winter months. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to have to uh, attend to the top box a bit and stop using it like a dumping ground really and just sort of think about what I need to do and that's store the crash helmet. This battery pack, this Anker 20,000 milliamp or what, or whatever it is, amp power or whatever, really good, yeah, really good so far. Um, I've used it for uh, a couple of things at home, but then I thought well I could use it on the GoPro and so far. It's okay, but we'll see. You know, we've got a long, long way to go yet before declaring it a useful bit of kit. Um, so yeah, um, I forgot what to say. <laughs> let me get, let me go over this uh, this piece, and we'll start again. Okay, here we go. It is very windy again. Yeah, so as I was saying about dressing the uh, top box, 
Uh, I have used it as a dumping ground. I've got to change that Oxford. Like nothing wrong with it at all. It weighs a ton. Um, but um, for now, I'm going to take it out of the back of the box when I get home because generally the places I go to I know are okay and, and actually the people at JNS were really kind they said what I could have done was just park the bike out front uh, with its back to the window uh, leave my gear on it and have been alright so um, and it's their private property so they're allowed to park there so if I ever do this again which I'm sure I will um, I'll remember that that's really kind of them so, other than the wind so far, this, this um, experiment is going alright so far. Bags are still there, which is a good thing. What do we have here? A once colourful building, it's now a bit dull. Yeah, just to repeat myself, uh, Freddie Dobbs' video about his bike being uh, attempted to be uh, had a go at, uh, stolen. He had a, he had a, I think it's a light on, like a D-ring thing. Um, I think they're about 200 quid. But from his assessment, his re not review, but his, his assessment for after the attempted uh, nicking of his bike, his triumph, um, they barely, um, Got any um, anywhere with it really? Oh, crap. So I've got to get over. So we're going straight on two, four, three. Um, oh, that was a bit of a bump. Yeah, so I'm going to have to take that weight out and probably buy one of those uh, D-lock things because uh, it seems to be better and it'll fit in my top box a little better. Three miles, 30. Yeah, um, that'll save some weight and space. And the idea is that I can just put my crash helmet fits into the top box. Got to take the GoPro off, but that's fine. Leave it in the box. Uh, but it, has, it only fits in one way. And obviously the chain. It will. I've just had it in there with the chain and everything, but it just takes up so much room and it's heavy. And I rarely use it. So I think the quad lock. You know, you've got your personal safety and bike safety. So. Um, you know, spend as much as you can, or both. So I'll get that uh, lock thing that he's got light on or something. Um, yeah, so that'd be cool. And that'll leave me raw. It means I can take the helmet off, and that means I'm not lugging the helmet around. And I can actually put the helmet on charge with this power pack that I've got. This anchor 20,000 hour, whatever it is, 20,000 milli hours or whatever. Um, I was running out of power on the crash helmet, but I can plug it in as USB, so um, it doesn't take too long actually, even at home, to charge it up. So uh, I've just given it however long I was in the shop 15 20 minutes, and I'll do the same when I get to Rikers. I'll just put it back in the bo top box and um, uh, I'll lock my bike up, not because I don't trust anyone at Rikers, because I don't really want a CV125, do they? <laughs> but um, I'll do it just so the chain's out of the box because it's just easier then I've only got my two bags to worry about so here we are nearly half a mile Rikers Cafe Box Hill very famous uh, cafe um, but a very good favourite haunt for those that Motorcycling Fraternity, which I have one. And there may or may not be any audience there, so let's see. Uh, 
and there's people here which is wonderful So, it never rains but it pours, uh, many of you might recognise this fence, right opposite me is uh, Riker's Calf, Box Hill, and I've met Joe, handed over the picture, which is great, done a load of, a few more pictures of, of the bikes, came out and ended up with a flat rear tyre. <laughs> oh God, happy Christmas to me. So there we go, that was the end of my day, uh, waiting for the recovery and we'll get that fixed. But there's, there's anyway, there's a look at the bike with all the gear on and it did work. Got my uh, camera gear uh, here and other stuff here in the top box on my helmet. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm just going to do a bit more uh, fettling with setting it up, but it's generally worked. It's good fun. Um, so yeah, here I am on the A24. Traffic going past, waiting for recovery. <laughs> anyway, have a happy Christmas and uh, please give me a thumbs up, please. Please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe if you'd like to. And I'll see you in 2024. God bless.